Today we're going to talk to you guys about some shocks. We're back. Steve here at D3. You guys seem to be loving this uh, tech content and I appreciate the love and support. Um, it's funny, you wouldn't realize by asking me questions actually helps me learn <clears throat> more myself and I like to explain things and uh, break things down for people. So we really enjoy doing these tech videos. So today we're back in the shock corner of the shop and we're going to talk some more about some shocks. We've got a set of Fox uh, internal bypass uh, live valve off a four seater. Haven't done a four seater, so this is the very first set. So I'm getting all my baseline settings. This is from Bill out in, um, I think, Winnipeg. I'd have to look at the shipping label. But uh, shout out to Bill if you watch this. Thanks for sending these in. We're getting them dialed for you. We're going to get all the spring rates sorted and everything, but I've already taken the shocks apart, uh, the one rear shock at least to get a baseline on the valving and he filled out our shock form and got all the data I needed prior. But we're gonna start on the outside and just do a bit of a rundown on the stuff that you guys are going to play with at home that I think is pretty important that a lot of people just don't have a full grasp on and I, I think I can help kind of simplify it to help you guys at home to get a grasp on it. So I pulled a shock apart, it's in the vise here. This came in from out west as well. He snapped his shaft in half back and into a tree, but I pulled the compression adjuster out of it. So this little snap ring is what holds it in. And that's the same on the cowies and stuff, but the cowies, they don't have the high and low speed. So this is slightly different, but the principles um, apply the same. So if I explain it on this one, you should be able to kind of visualize what it looks like on the Cowie. The Cowie is a single knob. I just don't have a shock apart at the moment to, to show you guys. But basically the way this works is this goes in the bridge. So you see this when you're tuning your shock. The screw in the middle is a slot screwdriver. It's a brass set screw. That is basically just a long tapered screw and it goes all the way down the center of this in this hole down in the middle. Oh, okay. okay. And that hole is cross drilled sideways just underneath this spring. You can't really see it. I don't want to take this apart by pulling the nut and everything off, but there's a hole that goes straight through side to side and feeds in to the bottom here. And basically the way that works is as this tapered screw gets tightened down inside, it blocks off this big hole so not as much oil can pass through this. Basically that hole is bypassing this piston, which is tight inside the body and has valves here. On this side is a compression. So as your shock compresses, when you hit a bump and the tire comes up, the oil is gonna go through this hole unless you hit a bump so fast and so fiercely that the oil can't fit through that hole at the velocity it needs to, it starts to bend these shims just like inside the shock and push against this big spring. So at the end of the day, the oil's gotta pass through this to go from inside the shock body itself, from this part, as it compresses, it's gotta go through the bridge and into the reservoir and push up on the IFP and the nitrogen gas is pushing on the other side, trying to keep the oil back and it cycles back and forth and back and forth as you're hitting bumps at speed. When the oil's coming back into the shock body, that'd be the rebound side and this is what's called a pop-off rebound. You don't want any restriction on the rebound. You only want the restriction on the compression. So on the rebound, the shim is on a spring and you can see this coil looking spring around here and there's only one shim and it just pops off exactly like the name pop off shim so that it gets all the flow that it can to let the nitrogen push that oil back as fast as it can as the shock extends because you don't want to create a negative pressure on the back side of the oil and suck on the oil and cause an air gap and then it'll foam and cavitate and everything. You want the oil to go back really quick. So these two knobs are only for your compression. The small one, like I said, is a tapered screw down the middle to block off this um, hole or port down the center, which is basically a free bleed or bypass around this big piston. The second one that a lot of guys don't even realize is an adjuster is this big hex. I think it's like a, I don't know, it looks like a 15 mil or something 16 mil wrench you'd put on that. 
It does not have clicks. It's just, you just spin it. And as you spin that big nut, that's your high speed. So here it says high speed compression. Um, it doesn't even say, oh yeah, low speed is written on the nut. So high speed is on the outside, low speed is written on the nut for the brass. The high speed compression, when you turn that nut on your shock, if you have this style of Fox shock, you're just adding preload to this spring. So you're pushing down inside on this spring, which puts more tension on these valves in here so that when you hit a bump so fast with so much uh, velocity on the shock, it's not the speed of the side-by-side, -side. like on your speedometer, it's not that speed. It's the speed at which the shock is compressing. It's the velocity or frequency of the shock shaft speed, the chrome shaft going into the shock. So a high speed would be a really hard hit. A hard hit, like landing off a big jump or cruising at say 15 miles per hour, but you hit a square rock, like a mm -hmm. ledge where it wants to like, like hitting a curb yeah. and it just goes wham and pops, like pops up super quick. That's when so much oil has to go out of this shock body and into the reservoir. It can't all fit through that low speed hole. The oil just won't physically go through there. So it starts to go through this piston. And the more you crank down on that big nut and put tension on that spring, the harder it is for that oil to get through this piston because the spring is preloading on it. So that's why it's, it's high, it says high speed and guys think, well, that means I'm hauling ass. Like, no, you don't have to be hauling ass. The shock is high speed. It's a high speed velocity hit. And then the low speed is more like body rolls. If you're just cruising down the road and you're just cranking the wheel left and right and it's kind of like floaty like a cloud and you want to get rid of that, that's because the oil's going around this valving and just free bleeding. It's just an open hole and it's going through and it's allowing it to kind of only rely on what's going on in the piston and not anything in the bridge because there's a big hole there. So you can turn that down for like that body roll. Or if you, if you roll over like a, 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 a rolling slow frequency sand hills, and the vehicle dips and lifts and dips and lifts, but it's not like jarring bumps, you turn in that low speed. And when you start to hit like square edge bumps and stuff at speed, and you find that the tires are coming up to the body too quick, that's when you turn the high speed. So basically if the body is floaty and dippy, that's low speed. And if the tires are coming up and hitting the bump stops too quick, but the body's staying, that's more your high speed. Hopefully that explains it simple enough. Um, it's really good when you can see it happen and play with it in person and kind of take those theories into effect versus just wrapping your mind around it when I'm explaining it. But that's how this adjuster works. Now if we look at the live valve that came in off this Cowie, the principles are the same, but it's got an electronic plug. So this is an electric DC motor that's got metering inside this bridge. It still has a bridge just like the other shocks, but this has the live valve on it or the three position clicker on the dash. And it just changes the voltage going into this plug to change how much oil can go through this bridge and how easily it can flow through the bridge. Just like if you were to get out and turn this with a wrench. It's the same principles, but it has different sensors on the vehicle to know if you're hitting the brakes or turning the steering wheel and stuff to adjust that, it's like 200 times a second or something. So it's Ooh. constantly, just imagine you sat out there with a wrench and you're like, doo, 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 as you're driving to try and <laughs> fine tune your suspension. Um, yeah. it's, it's not needed for a lot of people, but some people love that and they wanna do it. And then on the fly, the like soft, normal, firm or sport race, whatever the button says, would be like taking this adjuster and going all the way out, opening everything up with no preload on the spring and full bleed in the middle, and then going halfway, and then going all the way close. That'd be your three options on your dash. And then the live valve is the sensors within the vehicle monitoring everything and fine tuning it beyond what your three position button says on the dash. But the principle is the same. It's allowing the oil to go through the bridge from the shock. Okay. Electronically. Cool. So that's pretty much the outside of the shock. The other cool thing Every, about- Everything else is the same, more or less? 
Yep, you've got your preload rings, you've got your crossover rings, you've got your isolator, tender and main spring, and a reservoir. Piston inside the reservoir. One thing that's nice that I've learned with these Cowies, as soon as you get the live valve with the internal bypass shocks, the reservoir piston is already billet aluminum inside, so you oh. don't need to upgrade. It doesn't come with the plastic one, like the QS3 shocks. They yeah. already upgraded that. Very nice. Um, there's a lot of arguments online about nitrogen pressures in this. Um, you guys can argue all you want. I'm gonna run what I like. You guys can run what you like. It's it's not a huge make or, dig, make or break deal. Um, nitrogen plays a very small effect or small role in the ride quality. It's more on the valving and the springs. But the other really cool thing about this shock is it's an internal bypass. So I have one apart. We're going to go over that and explain how that can help you or not help you, I guess, depending on what you're riding and what you're trying to achieve. There's a lot more involved in tuning them if you're inside them, where the QS3s are really simple. This is the internal bypass tube. This sits right inside the shock, like okay. so. The top is neck down and it goes into the head of the top of the shock and seals off. And then your shaft with your valving and your seal head and everything sits against this to hold it inside the shock body so that it doesn't move. So if you have a two and a half inch shock, but it's an internal bypass shock, you're actually running a two inch piston because it needs to fit inside this. It's a smaller piston for the same size shock as the other shocks. Okay. And the way this works is well, I should probably hold that up at the same time. <laughs> I think we did, we showed a drawing of this once. Yeah, in one of our previous yeah. videos. Um, the ES review video. We did a drawing on this because we didn't have a shock apart to show you. But right now, I have this shock. So this is called the seal head, and that's basically the top of the shock. You'd see like your dust seal and stuff in the cap when it's together. I have that set on the shaft at the ride height that Bill has his machine at. He filled out my form, he told me how much shaft is showing at ride height. So that's where I set this. So it shows me how much room he has from his piston inside to the bypass port. So this is a two zone internal bypass shock with a bleed zone. These two holes on the side have no little shim valving on them. They're just bleed holes. So when this piston is below these holes, because this is upside down, this would be on your vehicle like this as you're driving down mm -hmm. the trail. It's going like that. It's just upside down to hold it. When you're driving around, when the piston is on this side, when it goes to push on the oil, it's not gonna force the oil up through the bridge. It's going to allow the oil to bend these shims open. They're just like little feeler gauges. And when they bend open, the oil comes out around the outside of this tube and goes in these holes behind the piston, hence bypass. Ah. It's bypassing this piston through these zones instead of forcing that oil because it has to make room. Well, some's still going to go, but instead of forcing it all through the bridge into the reservoir, it's just going to cycle around this tube. And once this piston becomes past this, this area you call the bump zone. And that's the last, what is that, like four inches? Um, the last four inches or so is strictly running on your piston stack of compression valving and whatever you have your bridge clicker set to. If it's a live valve, it's electronic, soft, medium, firm. If it's the regular style with the wrenches, it's however many turns you have that set to. This is basically a regular old coilover on any of the other machines, pretending that there is no bypass left. That's just a smooth coilover body. And then the same effect happens on rebound. When this comes back out, you're allowing some oil to blow out of here and go through these holes until you get past it type thing. So these two holes are just free bleeds so that there's always a little bit amount of oil to bleed without any shim on top of them until again you get past these holes. You can drill these bigger, smaller, you can plug them and move them, you can machine, like there's a lot you can do with these tubes. Um, we don't get into playing with much of that because it's for the most part not really needed. If you just get your valving where you want it and set everything up, 
usually works pretty good. But I think a picture is worth a thousand words for you guys to kind of visualize what's going on inside the shock when this goes past these ports and the oil comes back around to the bottom and feeds back in and vice versa. Maybe another thing to show you would be how it fits inside and you can see the gap then. If I slide this down in here. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a good amount. You can see the oil on the outside and the inside. Oh, it's going to overflow. Oh, there's too much oh, oil oh, there. Oh, oh, Yeah. There we go. So there's a gap. I didn't know there was actually oil in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's half put together. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that gap and it allows the oil to come around and through these holes back to the inside. And gotcha. it just keeps cycling. But other than that, this works the same as the other shocks. This just gives you another two zones of, I guess you'd call it valving. Me, I call it free bleed basically because you're allowing the oil to freely pass that piston. You can change these shims as well. But anytime the oil's not bending those shims, I call it bleed. So whether it's an external bypass or an internal bypass, you're, you're allowing bleed past that piston to get the shaft to move quicker. Because the quicker that that moves on like chatter bumps and stuff like that, the smoother the vehicle. Spring does not dictate the ride quality. The spring, if you grab any spring and you push on it, you can push on it as quick as you want, it just bounces back. So you want the oil to move quick on those with small chatter bumps and stuff. If all this stuff is so tight and so uh, firm, those bumps, you feel everything in the chassis in the car and you don't want it. You want the tires to dance and you want the frame, the chassis and yourself to just kind of float along. But then when you hit a really big bump and that thing goes flying up and wants to bottom out, you still have enough valving in there and the bump zone and the clickers and the nitrogen and all that to help counter that. So. You want to put enough free bleed in the shock to make the chatter smooth, but still have enough compression and rebound that the car doesn't just bottom out and then buck and bounce and unload on you. So you mm -hmm. do need some valving. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully that explains the internal bypass live valve shocks. Yep, if you've never been inside one. If you've never been inside one. And if you have one, now you kind of have an idea of what the plug is doing on the side of the shock. It's metering the voltage from like zero to 12 volts because the battery in the car is only 12 volts, so it's not going to go up to 20 volts or anything. Um, zero, the lower the voltage, the stiffer the shock, the more the voltage, the softer the shock on the clickers. And then it's got those sensors, and then everything else is just like all the other machines that you ride with that don't have live valve. And then if you have the bypass, well, you get a couple extra zones to help soften things up. And then you can understand if you lose ride height, if your springs aren't set up right, or you've lost nitrogen and the, the buggy's sagged out and settled down and your axles are all level and everything, it's not sitting where it should be, you're actually riding past these bump zones. And then you're mm. only riding uh, past the free bleed zones or bypass zones and you're only riding on your bump zone. And if they've got a lot of valving in them and you're riding in that bump zone, it is going to ride like crap. So you need to make sure when you have an internal bypass shock, your ride height is set right and you have enough shaft showing that this piston is sitting below. Uh. So chatter bumps, this will only move maybe an inch or two and it kind of keeps you in that zone. But if your ride height sagged down, you only had six inches of shaft showing and this was sitting there, well, every inch that goes up now, you're going to get into the bump zone and it's going to hurt. It's going to be rough. Mm -hmm. So when you own this type of side by side with these bypass shocks, your ride height is way more subjective to ride comfort than if you just had the regular um, 20 position uh, LSC Fox shocks where mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where it is, it's only the valving on the piston. Mm -hmm. So that'd be my tip for you guys. If you got these fancy bougie shocks with the electronic goo goo guru things, <laughs> whatever I'm trying to speak. Doodads. Doodads. <laughs> worry about your ride height way more than the other guys. Yeah if you care about your ride comfort. But yeah, if you got any questions, like always, leave a comment below. I hope you found this informative and helpful. Um, we're gonna get back to work here and keep doing these shocks for Bill. So thanks for watching. <laughs>